Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Carl and I'm a doctor in the Philippines. And on this channel, we explore the tips and strategies that can help you as a medical student on your journey through medical school. And in this video, we're gonna go over the five things you should know before you take your OSCEs, or some call it oral exams or practical exams. And as usual, there's gonna be timestamps below. So feel free to skip around if you feel like it. So let's get into it. Now part one, what are OSCEs? Now OSCEs are objective structured clinical examinations and this is where you're expected to do role-playing with you as a doctor and another person who is the patient and the patient can either be the preceptor himself or a sample patient and in this type of exam you will be performing the history and the physical examination of the relevant organ systems and then you will generate a list of differential diagnoses but the basic thing that you have to do is to just show the preceptor that you have the knowledge skills and competencies to become a doctor and you have to remember that these are the type of exams that you have to take seriously because these are the much needed practical skills that you have to have in order to practice medicine and treat real world patients. So it's not enough that you have the knowledge or the theory of medicine. You also have to know how to apply them in the real world. And OSCEs help you with this because it provides you with a relatively low risk environment because they are just simulated clinical situations so that when you finally go into clerkship or internship or residency, you will be better equipped with not only knowledge but useful clinical skills to help you become an excellent doctor. Now, the next one is to study with a partner or in groups. And as with any skill, you become better with practice, practice, and practice. And since the OSCE will be performed with a sample or a simulated patient, you have to practice having a real person with you, studying with a partner or in groups so that you can in a way reproduce or simulate the environment of the ASCII itself. And so studying by yourself or saying things out loud by yourself in your room will less likely work because it doesn't get you in the right headspace of actually doing the ASCII. And if you're worried because of the current COVID situation, you can always set up a Discord or a Zoom meeting so that you can practice with your friends before the exam. And when you're practicing with your partner or in groups, make sure that you're doing it under time pressure. You have to set a timer with your friends as this will help simulate the testing conditions and help you think under time pressure so that you will go to your exam well prepared. Some students tend to forget this and what may happen in the real exam is that they will spend a large amount of time in a certain area and then start to notice that they only have two minutes left on the timer and they still haven't gone through half of the patient's history. So make sure that you time yourself from practicing the history and the physical examination so that you can develop a sort of sub conscious feeling in your head of how much time has already passed so that you can pace yourself during the real exam and you won't miss asking important details in the history that might clinch the diagnosis. Now part three is keep the rubrics in mind. Now rubrics are tools that the examiner uses to grade your performance on the ASCII. It has a description of the task that you're gonna perform, a scoring scale, and standards of performance from which your performance will be compared to. So basically it's a grading sheet. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this so that you'll end up focusing only on the numbers or the grade that you will get. I'm telling you this so that you'll give importance to each and every aspect of the ASCII. Because some students can really do good in history taking and physical exam, but when it comes to putting it all together to create a list of differentials, they will tend to have some difficulty in doing it. So having the experience of being a preceptor myself and conducting SGDs or small group discussions with medical students, I found out that the areas of importance in the ASCII are history taking, physical examination, generating differential diagnosis, formulating your final diagnosis, therapeutics, and management. And of course, the way you interact with the patient or the rapport. How did you come across to the patient? Did you appear arrogant, authoritative, or indifferent? Or did you come as friendly, empathetic, and understanding? There will be differences in the way OSCEs are graded in other institutions, but the general way of conducting it is much or less the same across the board. And so it's not enough that you're particularly good in one of the areas I just mentioned in the rubric, but you have to be good in all of the areas as well. You will surely reap the benefits of this when you finally become a doctor in the future because all of these areas will absolutely make you a competent and kind doctor. Now, the next thing is to get the right resources. And there might be a lot of resources out there. You might easily get overwhelmed with it, but my advice is to just choose one that's recommended by your medical school or by the students above you. Now, in the Philippines, there are a lot of books you can use, but it depends 
depends on what OSCE you are taking. If it's basic history and PE, you can use Bates physical examination textbook. And when you're doing clinical OSCE, such as the internal medicine, you can use Harrison's up to date. And for generating differential diagnosis, you can also use this website, clinicalproblemsolving.com, where you can see a lot of diagnostic schemas organized per organ system. This is one of the resources I wish existed when I was still in medical school because this is so helpful for you to be able to form a framework in your head of how to organize the differential diagnoses in a structured manner that makes it easier for our brains to recall information. And one of my favorite diagnostic schemas that I always show my students is this one, which is the approach to chest pain. This teaches them a mnemonic to easily recall the never missed diagnoses that are life-threatening and emergent and try to rule them out but first before going through the anatomic approach. And the last one is this YouTube channel by Dr. James Gill. He teaches the principles and techniques in doing physical exam of organ systems and you can learn a lot from his method of teaching. And the last bit of advice I would give you is to ask help from your upperclassmen. The people or your friends from years above you have already gone through the OSCEs that you will be going through. So they already know the tips and tricks of how to go about it and asking them for advice on what cases came out last year and the years before will greatly help in preparing you for what may possibly come out in your exam. If you like this video and you would like to know more tips about medical school, check out this playlist over here which has all of the tips I have for studying in medical school. Now thank you so much for watching and do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and see you in the next video. Bye!